How to reduce the bounce rate of your website, part two. Now, obviously this is part two, so there is a part one. If you haven't seen that yet, then I suggest you go and watch it now because uh, it's really gonna set the stage for what you learn in this video. Now, I'm gonna go share my screen with you and show you the most important things that you need to do to start reducing your bounce rate now. Okay, so first I'm gonna show you how to identify the best pages where you should focus your attention on for the bounce rate. I'm in Google Analytics, I've gone down to Behavior, Site Content, All Pages. Now, you'll notice here that we have our, a bunch of our pages here. Now, I'm using an e-commerce example for this, uh, for this example because it clearly demonstrates the page value. You can still do this if it's a service-based business. Uh, you need to apply a value to all of the goals that you have set up and then you'll be able to figure out which pages you should be uh, working on to reduce your bounce rate and, and improve the user flow through the website. So uh, the main numbers that I'm going to look at here is the bounce rate, the uh, page value and uh, the exit rate as well yeah, in combination with the page views. So what I want to do is, you know, there's like most websites, you've probably got a bunch of pages on your site and to know which ones you should focus on uh, and spend your time optimizing to improve the bounce rate um, is what we need to get to. Because just because a page has a high bounce rate, it does not mean you should work on it. What you should work on is the pages that have the highest traffic in combination with the highest bounce rate in combination with the highest page value. So. Uh, I'll show you what I mean by that. Now, we have here this top page. It is, um, you know, we're getting the most traffic to it. It's got a bounce rate of 1.79 and it's producing $1.92 per visitor, which is, uh, which is reasonable and it gives us a good base rate. Then if we look at this one here, it's not getting much traffic, but its, uh, it's bounce rate is quite comparable to the top one and the per visitor value is already 5.54 so it's much higher than that. So uh, these ones are pretty much neck and neck which one I would choose to optimize if I was just looking at these top two pages why. This one here has a lot more traffic but the page value is a lot lower whereas this one here so I would choose this one because it's got a lot more traffic. Uh, this one here I would doesn't have much traffic but the per visitor value is much higher so I would potentially look at increasing the bounce rate which sorry decreasing the bounce rate which would help improve that potentially even further because I'm already getting three times more almost uh, value per visitor to the website than I am with this one this number here the per visit value is uh, one of the best numbers that you can focus your attention on when optimizing your website to improve your sales. So let's keep going down the list though. We notice this one here, we've got reasonable amount of traffic and the bounce rate is a lot lower than these two, but the problem is it's not generating any sales at all. While the bounce rate is uh, much lower already, we're probably not going to improve the bounce rate. Even though it's got good traffic, it's not making any sales at all. So I wouldn't spend my time on that page. This one here, you can see we've got a low amount of traffic again, the highest bounce rate out of these top 10 pages, but it's producing a much better per visit value uh, for this page. So what I would do out of all these pages, I'd probably start focusing my attention here because if I can drop that bounce rate by you know, even if I drop that by half, which we know is possible because we've got, you know, similar kind of numbers here um, for the traffic that we're driving to this site, then the output of the, the actual sales could be much higher. I hope that's making sense. It's a little bit complicated, but you're basically trying to line up the visitors with the bounce rate, uh, with the page, sorry, the page value, the highest page value. And then that will help you identify which pages you should be working on and which ones you shouldn't waste your time on. So this one down here, for example, we're getting quite low traffic again, but the bounce rate is so low, we're probably not going to improve on that anymore, and it's got a reasonable value. So it helps you to uh, 
understand where you should put the focus of your attention because we've all only got 24 hours in a day you want to make sure you identify the top pages so once again you can do this for a service-based business or free products but you need to attribute a value to each of those don't just go optimizing for the best sorry for the highest bounce rate just because it's got a high bounce rate you need to actually figure out what pages should you put your attention on to optimize based on which page is going to produce the biggest uh, financial result for you. Okay, so now that we've learned about how the traffic will impact, impact your bounce rate, now that we've learned how to identify the pages that we should be optimizing, here's eight quick tips to help you reduce the bounce rate of your website. So the first one is open external links in a new window. Uh, this should be fairly self-explanatory. If someone clicks on your page and then you're linking off to another page and you're taking them away from uh, from what you want them to do then it's going to uh, increase the bounce rate because if they click off to another site and then they click back onto your site uh, they have to click the back button to come back so one you're losing traffic but two it could help uh, or it could be causing your bounce rate to be higher because they're going away and they're coming back to your site the second one is install live chat so we use this uh, live chat, uh, it's actually called live chat, live chat inc. I'll probably put a link under the video somewhere to it. But with this, you can engage people much faster. You can have a pop-up, an eloquent pop-up that says something like, hey, just letting you know that I'm here if you have any questions. Uh, this will dramatically decrease your bounce rate and it'll increase your sales conversions as well um, by having this sort of functionality. The one of the other points is having the clear call to action. So in this here, you can see, uh, enter your email, and sign up for free, sign up for free. If you squint on this page, you squint your eyes, you'll notice that these two buttons pop out the most, and that's what all of your web pages should be. If you've got a high bounce rate, you need to have a clear call to action with a button or a link or something, an image that stands out that gets people to take action on that next step that you want them to do and this will dramatically help you to decrease your bounce rate. Use links to other related content on pages of the website. So uh, depending on uh, what website platform you're using, if you're using something like WordPress, you can automatically put a widget in there that will pull in content that's related to the content that they're already on and that will help to increase the amount of page views that you get on your website and decrease your bounce rate. Use powerful images to support the text. So there's another good example here of uh, using an image to support the text. Notice they don't have much text. They've got an image there that's supporting that as well. Um, and that will help to decrease your bounce rate because it's engaging and emotional. You can't get as many emotions uh, conveyed as quickly through text as you can through an image. Uh, use video, but don't use it on autoplay. So if you have a video with a compelling image on there that people want to click on and maybe a call to action to click on the video, you'll help decrease your bounce rate as well. Using social sharing buttons and the accordion functionality, I'm just going to show you an example of, of, of both of these here. So using the accordion functionality, uh, something like this, where you're getting people to engage with your website will help to decrease your bounce rate because people are actively taking an action on the website. Also, uh, using the social sharing icons, you've probably seen these around the place, very easy to install whether you're using WordPress or not, uh, and these will help to also decrease the bounce rate, while at the same time improving your traffic. So that concludes our tutorials on how to reduce the bounce rate of your website. If you need help, with reducing your bounce rate further. If there's anything complicated or uh, too technical, then leave a comment below and we'll reply or visit us at thinkbigonline.com and we're happy to help you. Uh, if you found this video useful, then you know, still leave a comment below. Let us know what you thought. Subscribe to the channel so you get updates and share it with your friends.